Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to change the brake pads in your 981 Cayman S, although this procedure is very similar across a large selection of Porsches out there. In my case, I am also upgrading to these track pads since I'm prepping for a track weekend. To make my life easier, I put up the car on quick jacks, although this job can be done on simple jack stands or just using a jack. Also here up in the bay, I popped this plastic cover off, which revealed the brake fluid reservoir. I loosened up the cap. This will allow me to push the pistons in and I'm going to put this towel around it just in case some fluid comes out and this towel can capture it. First thing we do is find our container and slide it up here. This will allow us to rest the caliper on it safely without having to suspend it on the spring. Next, we're going to remove this 10 millimeter screw holding the bracket together. And this is what it looks like. Then in the back of the caliper, you've got the brake wear sensor, which is a good idea to undo. You basically wiggle it out and pull it out if you are reusing it. In my case, since the brake sensor is really for people who don't know much about cars, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it and join the cables together to permanently disable this function. All you do is open up the wire and splice them together and then use electric tape to tie the ends and we can zip tie it back. Next, there are these two bolts holding the caliper, which we have to remove. Now, in my case, I am actually doing a stud conversion because these tend to strip. It's a popular upgrade. I'm going to link it in the description. It essentially replaces these two with studs. Uh, so it's easier for you to swap them, especially when you track your car and swap the brake pads quite often. This is what it looks like. Next, before we remove the caliper, what I like to do is I like to pull the caliper towards me to push the pistons in and then I push it towards the car just to push this side. This really loosens them up and allows me to swivel it back. And this is where this box comes in handy. You can easily just set them aside and maneuver it as you please. If you are not doing a stud conversion, you can skip. Now I'm going to show you how to quickly do a stud conversion. So this is the stud. This is how it comes in the package. And it's got two sides, a thicker side and a thinner side. The thicker side threads into this hole here where your original bolts uh, were. And there are some things you have to do to prep this. First, you have to make sure that the holes are clean. So I just blew some air in it and it actually took some debris out. You have to put a Loctite on it. The company supplies Loctite, but I've been using this and I trust this. Uh, I'm gonna link it for you down below. Uh, and actually what they supply is very, very small quantity. And then also supply these two nuts. The way it works is you put this first nut in, then you put the second nut in and then you back out the first one against it to lock them in place. This will allow you to torque it to five foot-pounds of torque. But before you do that, you have to put your Loctite and screw it in by hand until you cannot go anymore. Then you grab your torque wrench and torque it to five foot-pounds. Then you loosen the back one. Now that the stud conversion is complete, we can remove the pads and simply slide them out and pull them out. And they simply snap out. And these are the wires that we cut, which we will not be reusing. Now, if you are someone who actually cares about these brake sensors, you can either pop them out and reuse them. Well, not now. Uh, or you can get new ones. They're fairly affordable. As a comparison, these are the front stock pads that I just removed and these are the track pads that I'm putting on. They actually have a lot more meat left. Uh, from a design perspective, they are very similar. Uh, there's no shim in the back, uh, but yeah, size-wise they are the same. They do not have these glides on each side. Uh, so I'm assuming, actually I know from experience, these pads will squeak, but we're only gonna be using them for the track. Now, before we do anything else, you just grab the pistons with your fingers and push them in. Trust me, you can do it. You just got to take your time. This will allow you to slide the new pads in quite easily. And let's do the same thing with the other side. 
Now next step, I like to put this schmear. I've been using it on all my uh, brake applications and I've got to say, it really, really works well. I'm also gonna link it below. Uh, but you, you basically schmear it where the pistons touch the pad to limit the squeaking. Now, these are track pads, so they will obviously squeak, but you wanna kinda give yourself a leg up on the squeaking. Next is you take your brake pad, you slide it let's say at the bottom first, and then you position it against the spring and slide it in place here. There you go. So again, you push the bottom in and you kind of, while you're pushing it, you slide it out so it slides on this one and it pops right in. Same thing goes with the second one. Again, slide it in the bottom first and just push it against the spring and it'll just snap in place. And now, if you've played your cards right, you should be able to, in my case, slide them into the studs. And if you spread the pistons enough, you should be able to slide them in. If you didn't, don't worry, you can just, again, push them with your fingers and that'll allow you to slide them onto the rotors. Normally at this stage you will be replacing your bolts, but in my case we will not be using them because we are using a stud conversion. So first thing you do is you put a washer on and then you put on this nut. And we cannot tighten it just yet because we have to wait the Loctite to dry for about 20 minutes. In my case I'm going to leave it overnight. Uh, but once it dries we're going to tighten it to 56 foot-pounds. You almost let me forget, we have to replace this 10 millimeter bracket bolt. And that's it in the front, that's how easy it is. I'm just gonna use a wipe to wipe some of the dirt, although these will get very dirty at the track. The rear is actually a lot easier than the front because all you have to do is remove this little retaining clip, punch this pin out. This allows you to slide out the pads and you can simply slide the new ones in. In my case, the first step I'm gonna be doing is uh, a stud conversion. So again, I'm gonna be removing these two bolts and replacing them with these studs. And just like before, we're gonna take these out. This is what they look like, but again, we will not be using them. And before we remove the caliper, there's again a 10 millimeter bolt holding all the brackets together. So we're just gonna remove it. Before we actually take them off, since this is a good view now of these brake line sensors, see, if you want to, you can easily remove them. So, see, they just slide in and you just slide them out with a screwdriver. There's a little pin in there, you just pop them out. But in my case, again, I am not gonna worry about it because I'm going to clip them. Let me clip this a little bit. Strip the wires. Splice them together, use electric tape to seal them, and then just grab a zip tie and zip tie them out of the way. There you go. Since we're removing these for the stud conversion, we can actually spread the piston before we do so. So pull the whole caliper towards you, and that pushes the pistons, and then just push it on this side. <sighs> And check this out, it should simply just slide out. And let's put this in the back. And once again, this is your stud with the two nuts on top, which will allow me to screw them in. You put them in place, you make sure you have some thread lock on it, you screw it by hand, and tighten to five foot-pounds. And then remove them, and do the same thing at the bottom. Okay, the stud conversion is done. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna put everything back on just to show you what this would look like if you were not doing the stud conversion. So now pay attention because if you blink, you might miss it. You see this little pin? You take it out. This is what it looks like. Just make sure you don't lose it. Then get yourself a pointy tool and hammer this pin out. Okay, this will release the spring and 
just in case you are reusing the brake sensors, this little guy goes towards the bottom. So we'll put it here. Uh, and then, see, so you simply just slide them out. Although this pin will need to be hammered in a little more. This is what this pin looks like, and we're actually gonna clean it with a wire brush. But this allows you to take the brake pads out, and uh, this is what they look like. Now, before you put the brake pads in, you can use a wrench to press against the actual piston and gently push it back in. And trust me, it will go in. Just don't press on the rubber piece. And with the brake schmear applied, you slide the brake pads in place. And because of the fact that you push the pistons in, see it goes right in. Let's apply some schmear and let's slide it in place. Now we take a wire brush to this pin and just brush it gently. And now we're going to slide this pin in, but pay attention that the hole on the pin points up because this is where that clip is going to go. Uh, so again, as you pull it in, make sure the hole is pointing to the top. And as you're sliding it in, you're gonna slide it through this spring. So you're gonna press the spring while you're sliding it from the back. And because of the fact that we cleaned it with the wire brush, it goes in a bit easier, you see? You can actually press it with your fingers. And next, as you take your retainer pin and slide it in, maybe we use pliers for this. There we go. And after we tighten this 10 millimeter bolt up top, we should be good to go. And we are done. Now, let's see these things from up close once again. Look how much meat these track pads have. And these are Frodo DS uh, 1.11 that I've been running on my M3 that sits right there at the track. And I'm super, super happy with them. And uh, this is the back, this is what it looks like. It's funny because the design of the back is very similar to the design of the Brembo uh, calipers that I have on the M3. Whereas the fronts, I've gotta say, I know these are Porsche calipers, but they're a pain in the neck. The fact that you have to replace or remove the whole caliper to swap the pads, I don't know. Uh, I've gotta say BMW has a leg up on Porsche on this. But other than that, it's a fairly straightforward swap and I'm looking forward to see how these perform at the track. And this was nice and easy. Now, my job is not done here because tomorrow I'm gonna torque the studs to uh, proper torque amounts. I'm waiting for the 12 side uh, socket set to come in in the mail. I'm also gonna be doing a brake fluid flush, which I'm gonna do a video on, and I'm gonna link it in, the, in this video once it's done, so you can have it in one uh, complete set. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and as always, Thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. By the way, check this out. Where have you been all my life? This chair is an absolute must if you work on cars, especially with the, with the quick jack, because this is what I was doing. You didn't see it behind the camera, but I was sitting on this. I was comfortable working on it and I had all my tools down below. So I've got to say, if you are on the fence about getting a chair like this, do it. You will not be disappointed.